Hi, my name is Joanna Voronkovich, and I'm one of the faculty directors for the Center for Cultural Affairs at the O'Neill School of Public Environmental Affairs at Indiana University. So I had the pleasure of reading a great paper for this version of the digest called The Cultural Practices of First Generation College Graduates, The Role of Childhood Cultural Exposure uh, by author Susan Dumais in the Department of Sociology at City University of New York. So this is a paper that fits squarely within the sociology of culture literature and then extends on what we know about cultural participation. This is also a paper that I'm sure to use in my class on audience development and marketing for the arts because we talk a lot about the sociology of cultural literature there and in, in general, what are the determinants and factors that make people attend arts and culture. So the paper overall references these very long held theories about cultural participation uh, especially Bordeaux's cultural capital theory about how engagement in culture is a marker of social status. But then it uses new data, data from the survey of public participation in the arts from the 2012 wave. And it modernizes these theories by bringing in what we know about childhood exposure to the arts and the effects on later adult cultural participation. I would say the overall finding from the paper is that childhood exposure, exposure to the arts matter a lot. And in most instances, actually explains the differences we see between the cultural participation habits of, cultural, of college graduates and those without college degrees. The thing I really like about this paper is not only that it's a smart use of the data, the SPPA data are um, truly magnificent and give us a lot of information on cultural participation, but that also the author gives a very critical level of detail to the idea that education is the best predictor of adult cultural participation. In other words, she doesn't take the statement at face value and that's where the paper starts and I appreciate that. She instead interrogates that statement with using data on level of education and early childhood exposure to the arts. And then she also further interrogates this statement by looking at generational effects of cultural exposure and finds that exposure to the arts while young also influences whether or not a person exposes his or her children to arts and culture. So she does this sort of multi-level detailed analysis, which I really, really appreciate, and is able to answer her question in a lot more detail because of that. The study is rigorous and objective and aligns with the type of research that the Center for Cultural Affairs aims to promote and produce. And the author starts with a question and then finds multiple lenses through which to examine the question using this high quality data source. Also, the author doesn't start with an agenda. Her goal is not to prove that early arts education influences later cultural participation. Instead, she really builds on a body of literature about this issue and then uses her own method of testing the validity of previous work. So I'd say the application to practice is really clear here. I think more and more we're seeing that arts education at an early age is one of the best predictors of later adult cultural participation and how practitioners use these data and use this information is obviously entirely up to them. But to me, it suggests that as a field, we take the long view and then focus efforts on expanding arts access and resources to young kids and families if we intend to build audiences of the future. Thanks for listening and reading our first version of the digest.